back to all of your reviews. Today I am back yet again at Mercedes-Benz of McKinney where they have an absolutely perfect selection of vehicles ranging all the way from their EQ lineup, their EQ AMG lineup, the better AMG lineup, and all the other Mercedes inventory as well as some special uh, used vehicles as well and they have graciously let me review this brand new Mercedes AMG G63 the most indestructible tax write-off you could ever imagine now as overrated as people say the AMG G63 may be I think otherwise I think it's a very attractive looking money spending rodeo drive cruising suv that you could purchase and it does cost a quarter of a million dollars but think of two great things one it doesn't really depreciate i can find a g63 from 2007 and it's still going to be above fifty thousand dollars and this is before all the market adjustment and all that crazy stuff happened with the economy g-wagons hold their value surprisingly well compared to other high-end german luxury and performance vehicles the second important thing is that this thing weighs so much which is great because then you can have this as a business tax write-off yes you do need to have an llc registered but if you know what i'm talking about then you'll know that this thing qualifies and it's a great present for your wife without telling her that it's really just for you to get a nice tax cut but that's besides the point this thing looks really attractive from the front we did get these revised headlights back in 2019 and we've still carried that back into 2024 and i think that this looks really nice and attractive we have this front bull bar or bash bar whatever you'd like to call it it's attached to the chassis not the bumper so this thing is solid it's not going anywhere and it's metal which means that this thing is going to survive pretty much anything that you hit with it one thing I really like about G-Wagon is that all the vents are functional. All the other Mercedes vehicles have fake vents, and I don't like that. I like the fact that this thing is 100% useful. The Panamericana grille has been blacked out with the AMG Night Package. I think that it, which, it fits well with this manufacturer Obsidian Black Magno color. Um, one thing to know about the Magno color is that it's a softer uh, paint compound, which means that it's more prone to scratching. So if you did buy this vehicle, I would highly, highly suggest that you get paint protection film to really clear the whole car and make sure that you have peace of mind when you're out on the road or when it's parked, especially in this Texas weather. We have the lower portion, again, really high off the ground. This was originally made to be a military off-road vehicle, but that's since been, then been discontinued because all we see it uh, is parked in front of a Whole Foods or a Louis Vuitton store in uh, a somewhere in Los Angeles. But that, again, that's besides the point. The demographics for this car have drastically changed. And honestly, I don't mind it because it still looks and sounds really, really nice. We do have radar cruise control still, which is really good, again, housed in this Mercedes emblem. We have the regular Mercedes emblem and not the uh, um, Affolterbach crest, which I really wish uh, we would see on this. Again, it's easy to change out, but it's nice when it's from the factory. These two lamps act as both reflectors and turn signals, which is great. And if you're going to notice that the, the uh, roof line is a little bit angled in, and that was done a, a little bit ago for a very specific reason. Now, because this thing is literally a box on wheels, the reflection from the windows was literally just intersecting each other. So Mercedes had to taper in the uh, side profile of the vehicle to really make sure that there's no interior reflection. Even now it gets a little bit annoying uh, when I look to my left to check my blind spot and I see the uh, door handle on, on the, the, uh, the window itself. But then again, I think that what you're getting as an overall package, just that, it's a small little hiccup that you don't have to even worry about. Let's get inside this massive hood. Underneath this massive hood, we have the behemoth 4-liter bi-turbo V8 
AMG hand-built motor, one man, one engine, like all the other AMG 63s. This one right here was built by uh, Anuson, and I don't know how to pronounce his last name, but his name is indeed on this engine, which he built in Germany. Now, this engine produces 577 horsepower and 627 pound-feet of torque, mated to a 9G Tronic 9-speed multi-clutch transmission with the all-wheel drive 4-matic drivetrain. This vehicle propels itself, wafts itself, launches itself um, like a, the uh, International Space Station that it is to 60 miles an hour in 4.3 seconds, claimed by Mercedes but we all know that Mercedes overrates their times, which means it's probably closer to four or maybe even 3.9 seconds. This thing launches like no other vehicle I've ever driven before. The front lifts up, the rear squats down. It is a symphony of V8 noise, a lot of exhaust drone, and pure fear in the driver because he doesn't know if he's gonna be able to control it because the steering gets all light. Now this is a bi-turbo setup, which means that both the turbos featured right over here, are in the hot V configuration, meaning that the intake manifold feeds the turbos directly, it reduces lag, it gives the driver a better experience. Now I'm sure that Mercedes does have their AMG Petronas and the uh, Formula One engineering into this, because I, I've noticed that when you put the vehicle into sports or sport plus, the electronic turbos that are used in all modern Mercedes vehicles, they actually increase the PSI. And and that gives you better turbo response as a output. And I think that's a really good thing. You can tell all the PTSA moms whenever you pull into your child's middle school that you indeed have the most money out of all of them. Now we are at the side of the massive G63. And I'd wanna point out the massive front and rear fenders. These things are maybe about four and a half, maybe five inches in width. They're on both sides as well. And this thing just makes it so muscular looking. Coming down, we have the 22 inch by uh, 295 millimeters in width AMG Y spoke wheels. I really wish these did, uh, weren't in black because this does have the AMG Knight package. It's not my favorite. This spec with silver wheels would look so phenomenal. Um, I did notice that this is a square setup and the G-Wagon doesn't come with Michelin Pilot Sport 4s. It comes with Pirelli Scorpion P0s, um, which is a little bit of a harder component. I'm guessing that's done uh, because the vehicle weighs so much and they want performance while still making sure that the driver is safe with a proper wheel setup. Behind this, we can actually see that we have adaptive suspension. And one thing I did want to point out, um, the if you were standing next to this at a stoplight and you heard a different Mercedes go by first, you'd notice that it's a little bit louder than usual because that right there is the downpipe. It goes all the way down. There's a single muffler behind this step bar and then there's the exhaust right there. Maybe I can show you. Yep, there's only a uh, primary, I believe that's a catalytic converter and then it goes out to the side. And that's why it's so much louder than all the other four liter V8 Mercedes. Now right below the A-pillar we have the V8 bi-turbo and AMG badging. We have the body line that goes all the way into the rear um, into this side reflector. Again square setup so the rear wheels and the front wheels are the same color. I wish we could get the uh, carbon ceramic brake package on this vehicle but we can't. We also have the uh, tinted windows and all of that fun stuff. Now the G-Wagon is known to be one very specific thing maybe two actually. One is the fact that it's extremely heavy duty, well built and mechanical. And the second thing is it's outdated and those two go hand in hand. Now most modern Mercedes have keyless entry. This doesn't, this is all analog with the key. Now the modern rendition of this is that when you lock the car, the mirrors do fold in, but that's about all you get. But we do love the noise that this vehicle makes when you unlock and lock it. And I just locked the vehicle there beautiful noise and then when I open the door you can see and then closing noise you really have to give it force to close it don't be afraid of it actually let me show you the uh, mechanism right over here that's the door lock and then we have the point where it enters into the door itself very mechanical all right, fuel economy is terrible as we expected. 13 in the city and 16 in the highway. 
Um, honestly, I was expecting it to be less. I thought it was going to be 11 in uh, on the highway and then like 9 or 8 in the city. But I don't think that would uh, go well with the EPA. And um, therefore, we have 13 in the city and 16 in the highway. And then we also have a lot of people, for some reason, don't know this, but with your gas cap, if you actually put it right there, there's a hole for it. Or you could put it right over Actually, no, that's not true. I don't know why that hole's there, but it's there. Um, yeah, that's about it. Minimum octane rating is 91. Tell your wives this before you get it for them, and then they uh, put the wrong fuel in there. But yeah, that's that. All right, here we are at the rear end of the G-Wagon, the most simple and honestly outdated looking part of the vehicle. These taillights were uh, redesigned in 2019 to give it a little bit more of a modern touch. Uh, the uh, rear tailgate, as I'd like to call it, is very mechanical, just like the rest of the doors. Have to use the key to unlock it. We have the ex really nice metal rear bumper. This thing is durable. We also have the rear tire, but it's not the Y-spoke wheels. It's the regular multi-spoke wheels that we see on the G550, which I found to be interesting. The back is both carpeted and metal quilted, I would say, because this is quilted leather, uh, not the regular leather. And last time I did the trunk test in the G-Wagon, I got stuck and had to crawl through the rear seats. And that's why I'm not going to close the trunk on this one this time. But I will tell you that when I get in here, I fit in just fine. It's very comfortable here, actually, because we have nice quilted leather to enjoy the comforts of our G63 and tell everyone that we blew a quarter million dollars on a car, which we really didn't pay quarter million dollars for because it's finance for sure. All right, rear seat. And let me show you what troubles I have with here because there's a few. First one is the exhaust is right there where your foot would be right as you get out. So make sure that the person who is driving isn't revving the car when you're trying to get out or it wasn't heavily driven before you do. And if you do, then make sure you jump out, which you pretty much have to do because it's really difficult to get in. I'm gonna show you that. The doors open all the way and there isn't much clearance. So if you are a little bit of a bigger person like me, then uh, you're gonna have a little bit of difficulty getting in. And there's nothing to really grab onto except this door handle, but I really don't wanna break it. So what you have to do is left foot on the uh, plate right there, grab the driver's seat, propel yourself up, and then sit down. And then we have this very intrusive headrest that needs to be up. It's from the old Mercedes GL, which I found interesting. Here's the problem. This is set to my desired driving position. I don't drive too far back. I don't drive too far forward. And I don't have the most knee and leg room. Now, I wish that they made it a little bit longer so I could fit. Um, I have about four, two, three, three, maybe four inches of knee room, but foot room is good on the bottom. It's just this piece right here that makes me hit my shins against it and it's not the most comfortable. Speaking of comfort, this is the Napa leather, which smells really good. Also looks really good, nice, soft to the touch. You also do have heated seats in the back. There is an option to get cooled seats, which is always nice. We have quilted leather in the dashboard and then the metal window switch, which is off of the newer Mercedes AMG lineup. We have carbon fiber trim, always beautiful. Burmester surround sound system. And then we have the metal door handles. We have the round curved air vents, which I love. Not clicky though, which is kind of sad. We have a single zone climate or yeah, single zone climate back here. I wish it was dual zone because you we're, we're probably gonna have two people back here at a time. We do have our separate air vents on the side as well in the center. And there really isn't much of an amenities theme going on here. If you want amenities, then you want a GLS. But if you get a GLS, you won't have the status and the road presence that you have in the G-Wagon. Center armrest, same thing as you find in a regular base model E350. And I wish the sunroof came back farther, but I believe that would mess up the structural integrity of this vehicle because again, this was originally designed to be used as an off-roader. Now the quality of materials is insane in here. There's not much plastic going on. Even the lower door portions are covered in soft touch real leather. It's only the inside of the door cards, which we see a little bit of plastic as well as on this air vent, but otherwise it's all soft touch and it feels really good. Let's move on to the front and then go for a drive. Here we are on the interior of the brand new G63. It's beautiful, but it's outdated because of this infotainment system. This is the previous generation one. It's a little bit slow, but it's better than ones I've seen before though. 
but uh, they definitely do need to update the system for the next generation one to come. And the only thing I'm going to show you in this infotainment system is the fact that I have the massage seats going at the moment. Going down from here, we have the differential lock, the third, first, and second option. And this is for off-roading when you're never going to do it because you're too busy driving this thing up and down Rodeo Drive. Speaking of Rodeo Drive, we have an IWC Schulfenhausen clock. And if you want a wristwatch from that, pay out at least at least three thousand dollars for for one of those Schofenhausen washers. Cup holders, we have two of them, and then that is about it. Nothing else in this area, although we do have beautiful carbon fiber trim, previous generations MBUX touch system, and interestingly enough, Aston Martin still uses these. We have the drive select system, which is taken out of the newer vehicles. Uh, you can see that. As I change it, it does indeed change. We have the manual gearbox setting, the suspension setting, tractor control off, exhaust option, uh, the exhaust valve button, which is necessary, and then the camera button as well. So you can see what is around you, an essential function in this. You also have low range gearing, leave that off at all times. You don't want to break the car because that would be an expensive fix. They did put a new AMG wheel on this, which is interesting. I like that the fact that they did do this because this is a necessity. I think this is the most beautiful wheel that Mercedes uh, gives as an option. I'm not too big of a fan with the uh, winged system. I really like this one, uh, this one more. It's more easy to use and intuitive. We have carbon fiber on the wheel itself, top and bottom, with Alcantara on the sides. And then we have AMG script, flat bottomed, beautiful. I have the ambient lighting set to red. You can see that over in there is over there this does have the napa leather uh, seats and this has a manufacturer um, obsidian black color which is pretty much necessary on your vehicle like this and that's why it says jew manufacturer um, we have the burmester high-end surround system and that's why we have the burmester speaker on the top as well as the sunroof which doesn't do much for making the cabin to feel roomier we have the previous generation S-Class looking uh, seat adjustment switches. These are heated, cooled, and massaged, which is always nice. Up to three memory settings, door handle, and then another speaker. Overall, I think it's pretty comfortable. It does isolate you from the world quite a bit. It is a box, so it's really nice, but I wish the rear seat comfort was a little bit better. Let's go on for a drive. Here we are driving the brand new AMG G63 and it feels exactly how I thought it would. It's not super stiff and keep in mind I'm driving this the whole time in sport plus mode and it feels pretty good. The uh, dampening on the, uh, the suspension is pretty good. Um, it drives lighter than it actually is which is kind of surprising but um, then again it's, it, it is an AMG vehicle. It's a 63 badge and it does feel really good. The brakes bite really well. Uh, you don't really need the carbon ceramics because that's just too much of a, a burden on a vehicle like this. And I think that they work just as good as they do in the C63S. The get go from the line is really, really good. That wasn't much of a hard acceleration. I'm gonna get one after the turning radius test and I'm just gonna let you enjoy. The, the uh, turning radius was pretty good on this, uh, just how I was expecting it as well. Cabin noise is terrible, um, but you get a lot of wind noise and the drone from the exhaust is pretty significant as well. shift i like that i wish there was a little bit more pops on the overrun when you let off now we're going to get a little bit on throttle after the stoplight once variable valve timing kicks in it sounds really good doesn't sound much like a uh, a 4.4 liter anymore it sounds more like a, a 5 liter i'd say but yeah, it, this thing moves and it gets going really fast. I love it.
And that is the complete review of the brand new Mercedes AMG G63, also known as the G-Wagon, or the Rodeo Drive Crawler, or the Rich Person Mobile, or the Tax Write-Off Supreme, or whatever else you'd like to call it, but I think it's a phenomenal vehicle. Now let's talk about price. This is used. The, someone bought the car. A, it's brand new. Again, it's like pretty much brand new. Someone bought the car, drove it for 3,000 miles, and then sold it back to the dealership. And it's a quarter million dollars, 224,000. Not quite a quarter, but getting there. Close enough to a quarter million dollars to call it a quarter million dollars. But $224,000. Now this has pretty much every single option that you can get on the vehicle. One thing it is missing is the rear seat, cooled seat setting, which I mean, honestly, it really isn't that big of a deal. You really don't want people in the second row anyways. But otherwise, as a complete package, you're not really getting this to be the most practical person on the planet. And honestly, there really isn't any vehicle like this on the market. Utilitarian with a V8 that also has a luxurious interior. You could say that the Wrangler 392 has the same thing, but it really doesn't because this interior and this sort of vehicle is unparalleled. And just like Whistling Diesel showed us, this thing's indestructible. Sure, it's gonna be really expensive to repair when you rip the side fender off and the bumper off and break the AMG grille and the headlight, but that's when you're really trying to kill it, when you're really trying to beat on it. You're not gonna do this. This thing's gonna be on the street 90% of the time and that's why we have street tires on it. The only off-roading this thing's gonna see is if you have a slightly unpaved road on your way to your ranch or your beach house. Otherwise, this thing is great. I really can't say there's competition. If you wanna look at it from a street credit or a, um, a uh, statement piece standpoint, then sure, I guess you could say the Lamborghini Urus or the Bentley Bentayga are similar, but those are more refined and built for the street. This is built to be everything all at once, which is something that the other vehicles really aren't. That's all for today. Big thank you to Mercedes-Benz and McKinney for letting me review and drive this vehicle. And uh, please do consider subscribing and remember to keep on driving.